It's a bird. It's a plane. No, it's a number seven. First and foremost, Saab is a Swedish manufacturer of military planes. Always has been. And if you're buying their car, they really want you to know this. Just look at their advertising. Saab, nothing on earth comes close. And then a bunch of suggestive clips to tell you that the car and a fighter plane are identical twins. They're not. What's worse is after the Saab car division was sold to GM, you'd think that the aircraft connections would dial down, but they didn't. On the contrary, there were even more ads with planes. Planes not even made by Saab. Then in 1993, GM introduced a new generation Saab, which came with something called the night panel. Press a button and all the dials and buttons would dim down, leaving only the speedometer illuminated. This apparently helps when you're going down the airport runway. But the cream of the crop was the Vigan, a fast version of the 93, which not only had a whole airplane ad and the night panel, but it also shared the name Vigan with the Saab fighter plane. So did it work? Were people buying the Saab aero combatants for the road? Nope. Which is why GM killed the company in 2011. Number six. What does a 2015 Mustang have to do with planes? I hear you asking. Well, it was named after the P-51 Mustang fighter plane. That's hard to believe when the logo depicts a galloping Mustang horse, and this early ad just double confirms the horse theory. So what's this plane name and crazy talk then? The truth is, it was named after both. John Najjar, who designed the car, was, in his own words, a nut for the P-51 Mustang plane. Early in the development, while the car didn't even have a name yet, he suggested that they christen it after the Mustang plane he was simping for. Ew. But the bosses at Ford, they weren't too keen on the aero connection and were leaning more towards naming it the Cougar. They even had the badge made for it. No, not that badge. There we go. This gave Najjar an idea. If they want an animal, why not the Mustang horse? And the rest was history. Never expected Ford never officially admitted that the Mustang name originated from the fighter plane, but they sure were dropping hints from time to time like this photo shoot with the P-51 in the back, or these special editions with suspicious aviation liveries. And most recently, inside the 2015 Mustang, you'll find a Speedo that says ground speed, as opposed to airspeed, I guess. It seems like Ford is finally about to confess something. Number five. Although the Tramontana has more wings than any other car on this list combined, it's not an airplane that it reminds me of. It's the Apache helicopter. Look at that tandem canopy roof with the bulky body spread beneath it. Look at those sprouting planks holding the lights that look like the rocket arms on a gunship. The similarities are obvious. Many will also say that it's ugly like the Apache, but I disagree. I think it's even uglier. The Tramontana R looks like a helicopter that's been shot, crashed into a mountain, and then peed on by a passing dog. The next day, someone found that wreckage, mounted four wheels under it, and said, Yes, that design job is done. This car is truly god-awful, but it packs a mean punch. A twin-turbo AMG V12 making over 700 HP in the car that weighs less than the Cayman is a seriously scary recipe. Double scary. I'd piss my pants if I was driving it, as well as if I saw someone chasing me in it. But my god, is it ugly. So let's just move on because I can't look at it anymore. Number 4. When Pagani Huayra came out, the first thing that everyone noticed were these moving flaps, the ailerons. They work the same way as they do on one of these. When the aileron is raised, that wing starts to sink down and the plane begins to tilt. But cars are not meant to be doing barrel rolls, so why are they on the Huayra? Here's why. Throw a car around a bend and it will lean to the one side, resulting in the inside wheels losing grip. But if you raise the ailerons, you can push down the body and level it out. More grip means more speed through the corners. They also help with the braking too. But the Huayra Tricolore edition pushes the aero theme even further. Aside from the obviously obvious paintwork that was inspired by the Italian Air Force aerobatics team, there's also something called the pilot tube sticking out the front. When it's not cutting through pedestrians, like Jack the Ripper, this small instrument measures the rushing airspeed that tells you how fast you're going in aviation units, the knots. It's cool and completely pointless. But it's not like the rest of this six and a half million dollar hypercar makes sense anyway. No, it does not. Number three. Bagani's cool, but come on. I mean, come on. 
How can anything be cooler than the Morgan three-wheeler? It's got a big V-twin motorcycle engine hanging outside of the car, teeth, bullet holes, and pinup girl stickers all over the fuselage. Yes, a fuselage, and two machine gun looking exhausts that are running down the sides. It's so cool and incredibly silly. No woman will ever think of you as husband material as long as you're driving one of these. But who cares? Just imagine yourself driving down a busy road, thinking that you're in a World War II aerial dogfight trying to shoot down the cars in front of you while evading the bullets coming from behind. Half your body's not even inside the damn thing. All kinds of vibrations and pops of bangs are surrounding you. Oh, yeah. A woman would spend a fortune on cosmetics to look younger, but the Morgan? It'll just turn back the clock until you're a child again. A few other things to mention, the car you're looking at is a 2020 model, but it hasn't changed much since the original version from the 1930s. The body frame is still made out of wood, which makes it light and fast. 4.5 seconds to 60 fast. Honestly, if you're a guy, it's impossible not to like this thing. Number two. All Lamborghinis look wild, but every so often there comes out a model that makes the rest of the flock look as bland as the 1988 Ford Taurus. First, there was the Mura, then there was the Countach, and then came the Reventon. It started life as a Murcielago LP640, which was a surprisingly elegant Lamborghini as Lamborghinis go. But then someone thought, hey, let's make it look like an F117 stealth bomber. And they did. Painted matte gray with all those sharp edges, broken lines, protruding air intakes, exposed fans at the back, it was simply shocking. The response to it was so positive that Lamborghini quickly copy-pasted its edgy design on all future models that came after it. It's also funny that on the F-117, all those angles and matte paint are there to make it harder to detect, whereas the Reventon, well, let me put it this way, you'd be drawing less attention riding a dragon that has a boner than showing up in this car. There's more. The aviation theme is not just on the outside. Step in and you'll find an LCD dashboard, which despite being the first for a Lambo, isn't all that special by itself. Until you turn it on. Look at that! <laughs> it still shows revs and gears and a G-meter, but the design is so clearly aviation inspired. I could spend the whole day watching those little lines dance. The Reventon, man. It makes other Lamborghinis look dull. Number one. So we've had cars that kind of look like aircraft, have their speedos, their names, a couple of gimmicks, but there's nothing compared to what Chrysler made, a car with an actual jet engine powering it. Yes, a jet engine. Compresses the air, blows it at some fan blades, which turn the wheels and make it go. It's the Chrysler Turbine, a mad experiment which in 1963 saw 50 randomly selected families driving all over the country for months in these cars from the future. Yeah, try pulling off something like that these days. So does it work? Yes, it does. Apart from a slight vacuum cleaning noise and zero vibrations from the engine, the turbine drives like a normal 1950s Chrysler. It's got regular brakes, regular transmission, the wheels are circular. Engineers went to great lengths to make this car behave like any other car. Well, okay, there's the fact that it idles at 20,000 RPM and can burn any kind of fuel, oil, tequila, or Chanel No. 5 perfume. But other than that, you didn't need any special training to learn how to operate it. It was supremely reliable too, given how few parts make up a jet engine. But the lack of such cars on the road today should tell you that the Chrysler turbine didn't take off. That jet engine was just too expensive to produce, and the whole multi-fuel advantage wasn't a big deal at the time when oil was cheaper than the air. Oh well. And now, three more cars that want to be planes. Try and guess them. And...